2023 could be the worst year for the Chinese economy in 40 years, especially with the catastrophic decline in the stock and real estate markets, implying a significant decrease in the personal assets of ordinary Chinese people. Compared to the United States, China's GDP will be 72% of the U.S. in 2022 and drop to 64% in 2023. As the Chinese banking crisis unfolds, experts believe that the $28.2 trillion, 200 trillion RMB savings of the Chinese people are becoming the final target of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. The stock market ends, finance collapses, and the CCP targets $28.2 trillion of its population's savings. Meng Jun, a Chinese private entrepreneur living in the United States, stated on NTD TV's Outstanding Forum that China's economy will worsen and worsen. In the past two days, I have seen the Chinese Communist Party struggle to maintain the stock market at around 2,900 points. The index used to protect the market continues to rise, but it cannot reverse the current downward trend of the stock market because the northward movement of capital flow has reached nearly $200 billion in the past four months, something to be feared. This northward capital flow is the withdrawal of foreign capital and an outflow of funds and certainly negatively impacts the stock market. If there is too much bleeding, how can the national team protect the rankings? The stock market may completely collapse if it cannot maintain 2,900 points. The next step is the issue of the entire financial system in the banking industry. Xi Jinping has now realized that if this financial system collapses, the regime will be unstable because the financial system as a whole is essentially a subsystem of the party regime as the central bank controls everything. In the stock market in the past two days, you can see the national team protecting the market, not the constituent stocks, but large enterprises and state-owned banks such as Ping An, China Merchants, and ICBC. Ownership companies, including Mao Tai, Wu Liang Yu, and Gri, are trying their best to boost stocks, to lift it, but no matter how intense the boost is, it is useless. People are no longer foolish. Everyone can see it. The foreign capital is not silly either. They are all continuing to withdraw. If you look at the U.S. stock market, the Dow Jones Index has reached a new high, reaching 37,000 points, which is an entirely different world compared to China. If you look at the Hong Kong, Hang Seng, and Taiwan stock markets, they have reversed, which is unimaginable. In addition, Hong Kong's GEM has dropped to zero, saying this is tearful and completely unbearable. The biggest problem is that this looting has indeed taken away from the poor, from the real estate market and the stock market to trust funds. Everything has been looted by the rich, because the poor do not have much wealth to buy these things and the rich have enough money. China's stock market is a meat grinder. We have participated in the stock market for decades, 20, 30 years. This is essentially a process of being plundered by the state. That is, the bank owners and the state cooperate with listed companies to withdraw money. This model is used in all aspects to squeeze the garlic from the people. In this squeezing process, we are all cruelly squeezed. There is no way because the state has embraced us. Meng Jun said in the Outstanding Forum that China's economy has reached this point and we can't imagine how it will improve in 2024. Many domestic companies, my business friends, have fully understood and awakened, but it is a bit late. Friends, including friends in Shanghai, say they want to sell factories and land when they return, but no one cares about that. No one is foolish. In an age where cash is king, everyone is waiting to buy it at the bottom. Now there is a case of selling houses. This is an earthquake with a Richter scale intensity of 8.0. The government covers it up and does not report it, but everyone knows it, and people are not foolish either. Every local government is heavily in debt. How do we solve it? Issuing and using debt to pay off old debts are consistent practices of the CCP. If we are issuing debt, what should we do? Let ordinary people buy bonds because they still have a lot of savings in the bank. This is the next looting step that I always emphasize. The CCP has long aimed at the pockets of the people, that is, the deposits of the people. To let you know, the deposits of these residents are sure to be withdrawn entirely, and they will do everything to clean them out because the amount there is nearly $28.2 trillion. If you think about it, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, controls the banks, so it will be useless if not utilized. Now, with the new regulations of the banks, you can only withdraw large deposits from a few banks. When you withdraw money, the bank will ask you how you obtain the money, whether the tax is legal or not, and require you to provide simple, frightening evidence. Hong Kong's integration with mainland China has caused China's economy to fall into a long-term recession. Guo Jun, the chief editor of Da Ji Yuan, stated in the Outstanding Forum that the Hang Seng Index of Hong Kong is currently above 1,600 points, returning to the level when the CCP took back Hong Kong in 1997. The Hong Kong Growth Enterprise Market, 
established in 2000, had an index of 1,000 points, reaching a high of over 1,800 points. Now it's only 20 points, basically zero. Hong Kong is now highly integrated with the mainland's economy, and foreign capital is leaving Hong Kong. Therefore, the current situation of the Hong Kong market is terrible and lacks the potential for change. Real estate in Hong Kong is also complicated. Although property prices have dropped less than in mainland China, there are no transactions in the market and no one dares to buy. A common practice in Hong Kong now is that if you buy a house, the seller may lend you the money to buy it, even if you rent his house. He says that if you want to buy it, the rent can be considered money to buy the house. He uses many different methods to persuade you to buy a home. Moreover, house prices around Hong Kong have dropped significantly. For example, in Daya Bay in Huizhou, a house overlooking the sea used to cost over $140,000, but now you can buy it for about $21,000, even lower than in 1997. A bit higher in Zhui Hai, such as Zhongshan, a villa that used to cost over $420,000, now costs $70,500. Property prices in Zhui Hai and Shenzhen are also decreasing, and property prices throughout the Greater Bay Area, including Guangzhou, are also falling. Shi Shan, a senior editor and chief writer of Da Ji Wan, said in the Outstanding Forum that the stock market, the real estate market, and all financial and capital markets are interconnected. Your financial sector will be affected if the real estate and stock markets decline. We have discussed China's economic crisis before. Many financial institutions have problems, and now this list is growing, with non-banking financial institutions all having difficulties. We all know that the stock market has three stages, the rising demand and three phases of the falling market. The most dangerous stage is the third stage of the falling market, that is, it just starts to decline and people are all scared. The final decline is a long-term decline. It is the most dangerous stage, sometimes reducing for several years. A few years ago, people were talking about this, saying that they hope most now that all garlic sprouts will stand up. If they think about it, all garlic sprouts will lie down and it will be difficult to cut. They hope garlic sprouts will take over and you will work hard, reflecting poor information. Among the people I know, the richest and relatively high-status people have fled long ago and will not wait until now because the problem here is poor information. Guo Jun said in the Outstanding Forum that a financial research center in Japan recently issued a report believing that China's financial crisis is about to happen. Of course, the financial crisis will not come soon. It has already arrived. This report considers the CCP's use of its solid economic power to maintain the financial system. Still, it will not last until 2027, when the financial crisis will explode. The Japanese are very conservative, and Guo Jun disagrees with their cautious estimates. Still, they believe that once the financial crisis breaks out, it will last at least 8, 9, or even 10 years, meaning it will not recover until after 2035. The current situation in China is similar to Japan's after 1991. China's economy, which was copied from Japan's, oriented outward and controlled the industry inward, and financial interest rates were artificially lowered for a long time, a period of training. The current situation is very similar to China and Japan in the 1990s. The capital bubble is severe, the leverage ratio of financial institutions is too high, the national debt ratio is large, exports are disappointing, and trade disputes with the United States are occurring. All are very similar. Of course, my view is more pessimistic than this report because the base situation of China and Japan is different, the political system structure is also different, and the characteristics of communist countries are exceptionally rigid, so it is tough to resist the crisis. Still, because they are very strict, they are extremely brittle, easy to break, and easy to collapse. The history of Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union is like this. They could resist various social crises quickly, but society collapsed like a receding tide once they could not. So compared to China and Japan, the current situation in China is more dangerous. Guangming has become a positive indicator and China's economy is critical. Guo Jun stated in the Outstanding Forum that the central theme of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, currently is praising the general theory of the Chinese economy. It was one of the primary measures in this year's Central Economic Work Conference of the Central Committee of the CPC. The National Security Bureau of the CCP has repeatedly emphasized that any comment on China's economy are related to the scope of national security. The National Security Bureau used to be very modest. Still, now the minister of the National Security Bureau, Chen Yixing, personally attends many economic meetings and sits there, moving from behind the scenes to the front of the stage. He used to be an intelligence director, but now he goes straight to the front of the stage. The current situation is that speaking well of China's economy, 
Boasting or speaking nonsense is acceptable, but negatively speaking of the problems violates the national security law. Even experts from the CCP will only be influential if the economy is good. For example, Liu Jinpeng, the head of the Capital Finance Institute of the Renmin University of China, the director of Minchang Bank, and a member of China's security laws, state-owned enterprise property law, and securities investment law, was one of the drafters of fundamental laws such as the Fund Law and Futures Trading Law. A few days ago, an expert like him thought that ordinary people should not invest in the stock market because the risk is too significant. As a result, his Weibo account was blocked because Illuminati was not allowed to sing. So, the design of the CCP system has many problems and weaknesses. They are still pursuing a market economy while controlling and unifying the discourse, the funniest thing about the CCP. Because the market is a transaction, if someone buys, someone will sell. In this investment or speculative market, optimistic people will buy and pessimistic people will sell. Only then can there be a transaction, a fundamental law. The price is the balance between buying and selling, that is, the balance between optimistic and discounted views. If everyone is happy, no one will sell, and if everyone buys, there will be no transactions in the market, reflected in prices. In terms of costs, prices will rise and no agreement can be reached. The opposite is also true. When we look at the Chinese stock market, whether it is the stock market, futures market, or even the real estate market, the most significant characteristic is the so-called one-sided market. When it rises, it rises sharply. When it falls, it collapses like a rock, falling in desperation with, with huge volatility, and the market is volatile. Like the mood of the mentally unstable person, that is the characteristic. The reason is due to the control of speech, speech control, and high risks in China's capital market. One of the biggest reasons is this type of speech control. This type of speech control is also a reverse indicator. When the government requires everyone to sing cheerful songs, the economic problem is severe, the growth rate is meager, investment is very scarce, and financial profits are also decreasing. If comfortable and allowed to talk about issues and criticize a little, we will know that the economy is too hot. The situation in China has been alternating between the two sides for many years, but the most serious now is like a late-stage cancer. The whole body has painful spots, and the acupuncture points are blocked. You cannot touch them. Any words constitute national security. What does this mean? It shows that China's economy is in a critical and dangerous condition.